Hello my dear children, once again welcome to your physics class. Hope you all are fine over there. In the previous session we had discussed about standing waves in a stretched string and also we discussed the different harmonics possible in a standing wave, sorry in a stretched string. Okay and those harmonics are known as modes of vibration and the lowest frequency with which the string can vibrate is the fundamental mode of vibration or it is also known as the first harmonic. We also learned how to sketch different harmonics in a stretched string. So today we will discuss a similar topic. Today we will discuss the standing waves or the nodes and antinodes in a system which is closed at one end. That means we will discuss the standing wave pattern in a closed tube. So here we will discuss nodes and antinodes for a system closed at one end. And such a system which is closed at one end is also considered as a closed tube. In a closed tube, one end is closed and the other end is open. A air column in a glass tube partially filled with water is an example of closed system. So if you consider a pipe-like structure, see if you consider a structure like this. Here this end is open but this end is closed okay so this system is an example for closed tube okay because one end of the tube is closed and other end is open and such a glass tube which is partially filled with water like this is an example the air column inside such a tube is an example of closed system okay now this air column in the tube can be set into vibrations with the help of air excited by the tuning fork. So just take a tuning fork like this and just show that tuning fork or just vibrate that tuning fork at the mouth at the open end of this tube and that vibrations will be passed through the air into the tube. And from the tuning fork what type of waves are generated longitudinal waves are generated we had already studied that concept in our class 9 physics when a tuning fork vibrates longitudinal waves are formed because sound waves are produced when the tuning fork is set into vibration and sound wave is an example for longitudinal wave so when such a tuning fork is excited near the mouth of the tube this clo closed tube what happens the longitudinal waves generated is reflected at the closed end and a node is formed there. That means the vibrations produced longitudinal waves or the vibrations produced from the tuning fork enter into this tube and the waves reach here okay at the closed end on reaching the closed end the waves will be reflected back and you know the waves reflecting from the closed end will be out of phase with that of the incident wave so the reflected waves will be like this okay so thus a standing wave pattern is formed okay inside a closed tube and at the open end always amplitude is maximum so anti node is formed here you can see this is the open end so always at the open end amplitude is maximum so anti nodes are formed at the open end but what about the closed end so this is the closed end at the closed end always node is formed see this is the closed end and here always node is formed nodes are points with zero amplitude so at the closed end always nodes are formed and at the open end always anti nodes are formed and if we consider this tube of length capital L this end can be considered as L that means the end where the anti node is formed can be considered as L and the system where node is formed can be considered as x equal to 0. So the length of the tube ranges from 0 to 
L. So this point, this closed end can be considered as x equal to 0 and the open end can be considered as x is equal to L. So at open end always anti node is found, isn't it? So what is the condition to obtain anti node? We know that condition to obtain anti node is x is equal to n plus half into lambda by 2, isn't it? So here what is n? Sorry, what is x? See, x is equal to L because anti nodes are formed at x is equal to L. So here instead of this x, we can substitute L. So at L, we will get n plus half lambda by 2. And here n starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. Now, what is lambda? From this lambda is equal to 2 into L by n plus half. Okay. And again, what is the expression for frequency? We know that frequency nu is equal to V by lambda equal to V by, what is lambda? Lambda is 2L by n plus plus half. So this n plus half will go to the numerator. So you will get the expression for frequency nu is equal to v by 2l into n plus half where n is equal to 0, 1, 2 etc. So from this equation it is very clear that the air column can vibrate only for a certain set of frequencies. It cannot vibrate for all frequencies. Air column can vibrate only for half integral multiples of, that means odd half integral multiples of V by 2L. So let's discuss about those frequencies next. So we got the expression for frequency as nu is equal to v by 2l into n plus half and here n starts from 0, 1, 2 etc. So when n is equal to 0 you will get the first mode of vibration and that is equal to v by 2l into half. Okay, v by 2l into half. Then, when n is equal to 1, second mode of vibration is obtained and that is equal to v by 2l into 2 plus, sorry, 1 plus half is 3 by 2. So, we will get 3 by 2 into v by 2l. Now, for n is equal to 2, for n is equal to 2, you will get nu 3 is equal to v by 2l into 2 plus half is 5 by 2. Okay. So, from this it is very clear the air column in the glass tube or in this closed tube can vibrate only for these set of frequencies. So again we can rearrange the expression v by 2l into half can be written as v by 4l. Okay, then v by 2l into 3 by 2 can be written as 3 into v by 4l. Then v by 2l into 5 by 2 can be written as 5 into v by 4l. So from this it is very clear the air column inside a closed tube can vibrate only for odd integral multiples of V by 4L. Isn't it? This is 1 V by 4L. This is 3 V by 4L. This is 5 V by 4L. At the same time air column cannot vibrate at such frequencies like 2 into V by 4L. Or you cannot find any frequency like 6 into V by 4L like that or 4 into v by 4l like that okay so even multiples of v by 4l is not obtained that means the air column inside the string will not vibrate for these set of frequencies 
the air column will vibrate only for odd integral multiples of V by 4L. So these frequencies at which the air column vibrate is known as modes of vibration and which is the first uh, mode of first harmonic or the fundamental mode the lowest frequency with which the air column vibrates that will be the fundamental mode or the first harmonic so here which is the lowest frequency lowest frequency is obtained when you put n is equal to 0 so this is the lowest frequency at which the string vibrates v by 4l so v by 4l is the first harmonic or the fundamental mode of vibration so the higher frequencies are odd harmonics of fundamental frequency okay this is fundamental frequency v by 4l and second harmonic is 3 into v by 4l that means odd multiples of fundamental frequency okay so we can sketch the first harmonic second harmonic third harmonic like that for this closed tube so here we must note down one thing here when n equal to 0 first harmonic is obtained but when you consider the case of stretched string that we had discussed yesterday the first harmonic is obtained for n is equal to 1 but here in the case of closed tube first harmonic is obtained when n is equal to 0 and second harmonic is obtained when n is equal to 1 so it goes on like that okay so uh, and also in the case of um, air column we have one more modification this for n is equal to 0 we will get the first harmonic but when n is equal to 1 you will get the next frequency but that next frequency is denoted by third harmonic why because it is the multiple of 3 okay it is obtained by 3 into v by 4 l so it is the integral multiple of 3 so let it be the third harmonic and the next frequency is obtained for n equal to 2 but that is the multiple of 5 so let it be our fifth harmonic okay so the harmonics of the air column inside the closed tube can be denoted by first harmonic third harmonic fifth harmonic seventh harmonic ninth harmonic like that that means old harmonics even harmonics are not obtained for a closed tube system okay so now let's sketch the old harmonics of a closed tube so i told you this is the closed tube it is closed at one end and open at other end so how will you sketch the harmonics for a closed system so for that we need to know the relationship between the length and wavelength of that length of the tube and the wavelength of the wave. So in the previous slide we had found that relationship that is lambda is equal to 2L by N plus half. Okay. So for the first harmonic N is equal to 0. Right. So when you put N equal to 0 in this equation you will get lambda equal to 2L by 1 by 2. 2L by 1 by 2 is 2L into 2. That means 4L. Okay. So, lambda is equal to 4L. Therefore, L is equal to lambda by 4. Send it. L is equal to lambda by 4. So, within the length of that closed tube. So, this is the length L of the closed tube. And within that length, how many wavelengths are obtained? Lambda by 4 wavelength is obtained. Lambda by 4 is the one fourth of that wave. That means if you consider a standing wave like this. Yesterday we studied that this is lambda by 2. This is another lambda by 2. Isn't it? And this whole wavelength is equal to lambda. So if this segment is lambda by 2, then half of this segment, it will be lambda by 4. Second half of this segment will be lambda by 4. It's like that. Okay. So here for the first harmonic, that means when n equal to 0, l is equal to lambda by 4. That means lambda by 4 wavelength is ob observed within that whole length of the closed tube. So lambda by 4 means one half of the 
first segment or one half of a single segment of the standing wave. So let's plot that segment here within this length L of the tube. See, so this is the first harmonic. Okay, this is the first harmonic. Lambda by 4 wavelength is obtained or observed for the first harmonic. Now, for the second harmonic, what is the relationship between wavelength and the length of the tube? So, again, we need to write that equation. Lambda is equal to 2L by N plus half. And for third harmonic, N is equal to 1. When N is equal to 1, you will get lambda is equal to 2L by 1 plus half is 3 by 2 that is equal to 4 L by 3. Therefore, length L is equal to 3 by 4 into lambda. Okay, that means you will have 3 times lambda by 4, isn't it? 3 times lambda by 4. So, 3 lambda by 4 must be obtained in for the next harmonic. That means for the third harmonic. So, for the third harmonic within the same length L, 3 lambda by 4s must be obtained. So, 3 lambda by 4 means 1 and a half segments, right? Like this, see? So, this will be 1 lambda by 4, this will be another lambda by 4 and this will be another lambda by 4. So, altogether 3 lambda by 4s are observed for the third harmonic. Okay. And similarly for the fifth harmonic you will get two and a half segments. Because for the fifth harmonics you must get 5 lambda by 4s. So, for 5 lambda by 4s there must be Five lambda by four segments. So here, one lambda by four. Here, two lambda by four. Here, three lambda by four. Again, four lambda by four. And here you have fifth lambda by four. So for the fifth harmonic, you will observe two and a half segments in the closed tube. So, like this, we need to sketch the harmonics of a closed tube. So, you must learn to sketch the different harmonics for a closed tube and only odd, odd harmonics are generated for a closed tube. Uh, children, next we can discuss another similar system in a tube that is open tube. Open tube is a tube which is open at both the ends. In the closed tube one end is closed and other end is open but in a open tube both the ends will be open and the air columns excited inside the open tube also produce certain waves and this musical instruments such as flute and many organ pipes are best examples for open tube. Okay. And so the musical instruments produce different tunes and uh, different we can tune them to produce different ragas and all those things due to the excitation of air column or due to the vibration of air column inside this open tube. Okay, so in open tube what are the different harmonics produced? In the closed tube, only hard or odd harmonics were generated. But in an open tube, do it generate only odd harmonics as that of closed tube? Or do it generate all the harmonics? Or do it generate only even harmonics? So, let's discuss about that. So, on the screen, you can see an open tube. Both ends are open. And you know at the open ends only antinodes are formed. Isn't it? Amplitude is maximum. And since two consecutive antinodes are not possible. And you might remember the structure of a standing waves. Because standing waves are produced in an open tube also. So here this is one antinode and this is one antinode. In between two consecutive antinodes you can see one 
note. So to adjacent antinodes are not always possible, are never possible actually. In between two antinodes, there must be at least one node. That is the minimum case. There, there must there can be any number of nodes, but in between two adjacent antinodes, there must be one node. Okay, so between two consecutive antinodes, there must be one node. So here there will be one node. So we can sketch the wave like this. Here amplitude is maximum. Here amplitude is maximum at the antinodes. And at the nodes point amplitude is 0. Okay. So this is the pattern of waves produced in the open tube and this is the minimum set of frequency or this is the minimum frequency at which the air column in an open tube can vibrate. So in the previous cases we had generated a formula and from the formula we sketched the harmonics but here from the figure we can find an expression for the frequency. Okay, so here we can see within the length of the tube, this is the length of the tube, isn't it? And within the length of the tube, how many wavelengths are produced? So the distance between one antinode to another antinode is lambda by 2. Okay, so here only two antinodes are observed. So the distance between these two antinodes is or the wavelength is lambda by 2. So within the length L of the tube, only lambda by 2 wavelength is observed. Okay, since it is the first case, so let it be denoted by lambda 1. So from this, what is lambda 1? Lambda 1 is equal to 2L. And once we got lambda, we can easily find out the expression for frequency. Frequency nu is equal to V by lambda and V by lambda is 2L. So this is the first harmonic that means this is the minimum frequency with which the air column inside an open tube can vibrate and so this is the fundamental mode or the first harmonic in the case of open tube so in the, in the case of closed tube first harmonic was v by 4l in the case of open tube the first harmonic is v by 2l and this is the harmonics. You must learn to sketch the harmonics also. Okay, so this is the first harmonic. First harmonic in an open tube. Next, let's discuss about the second harmonic. Okay, so in the case of second harmonic, within the same length L of the tube, here one antinode is produced. Here also one antinode is produced. Since we are going to sketch the second harmonic, there must be at least two nodes. So here there will be one node. Here there will be an, one node. And as I told you, two adjacent antinodes are not possible. Similarly, two adjacent nodes are not possible. So in between these two nodes, there must be one antinode. Right? So our figure looks like this. Okay, now at the nodes amplitude is 0 and at the antinodes amplitude is maximum. So how many wavelengths are observed here? And here from this antinode to this antinode the wavelength is lambda by 2. And from this antinode to this antinode the wavelength is again lambda by 2. So 2 lambda by 2 wavelengths are observed within the length L of the tube. So this is for the second case. So for the second case, 2 lambda by 2 is observed. 2 lambda by 2 is observed. And 2 lambda by 2 is lambda itself. So therefore the frequency nu is equal to V by lambda. Okay, V by lambda. And this V by lambda can be denoted as V by L. Okay. And to be more specific, so we will get L is equal to 
to lambda by 2. So from this lambda is equal to 2L by 2. And do not cancel these two. Uh, it is required. You will understand later in this session itself. And frequency nu is equal to V by lambda. That is equal to V by 2L by 2. And this 2 goes to the numerator. So you will get frequency nu is equal to 2 into V by 2L. Okay, so this is the frequency for the next harmonic. That means for the second harmonic. So do you remember the first harmonic? The first harmonic was V by 2L. And the second harmonic nu2 is 2 into V by 2L. Okay, similarly th the next harmonic will be 3 into V by 2L. Similarly, the next harmonic will vibrate at frequency 4 into V by 2L. Too well okay so these are the harmonics or these are the sets of frequencies with which or at which the air column inside an open tube will vibrate and here when you look at the set of frequencies you will understand the air column inside the open tube will vibrate for all frequencies not only for odd harmon frequencies it will vibrate for all multiples of integral multiples of V by 2L so all types of harmonics are generated in a open tube but in the case of closed tube only odd harmonics were generated. So that is the major difference between closed tube and open tube. In a closed tube only odd harmonics are generated but in an open tube both harmonics both odd and even harmonics are generated. But at the same time, uh, these at, in this open tube, we cannot observe any frequencies at 2.5 V by 2L or at 3.5 or th at 3.6 V by 2L because 3.6 and 2.5 are not integers. They are decimal values. Okay, so we can observe frequencies only for the integral multiples. Okay, if the multiples are non-integer values or decimal values, we will not observe uh, the frequencies or we cannot find any vibrations for such frequencies. Frequencies are observed only or vibrations are observed only for the integral multiples of the fundamental frequency. So in the case of open tube, the fundamental frequency is V by 2L and this is the first harmonic. But in the case of closed tube, the fundamental frequency is V by 4L and that will be the first harmonic in the case of fundamental tube. That is a major difference. And the second major difference is that open tube generates all harmonics, both odd and even, but the closed tube will generate only odd harmonics. Okay, and the best example for open tube is musical instruments such as flute, organ, pipe like that. Okay, so that's all about the harmonics of a tube which is closed at one end and which is open at both the ends. So with this I am concluding the session. We will meet in the next session. Till then take care all of you. Notes of the topic have been uploaded. Just go through it. All of you stay home, stay safe. Keep learning. Thank you.